And welcome, welcome everyone. So glad you're here. We're gonna have a, a great class today. If you are ready for it, go ahead and come up into a standing position, sort of sort yourself out, make sure there's nothing around you you'll collide with and start to shift the weight back and forth because we need a reminder of where we're stationing our body weight and it may be leaning. And there's usually a reason that we do it. Sometimes it's just habit, but sometimes there's something going on in the foot, the hip, the leg, you know, all the way up and down the body. There's these these partnerships, these compensations. And so we don't know that this them when they become normalized, they're common. But now we're just gonna do this thing where we, we take our conscious mind and we review. We look into the feet, into the hips, everything. And then we get ourselves to the point where we're centered, equal weight. And we begin to turn those shoulders. Now, as best you can, just let those arms sort of wobble and hang. Let them be just these weighty objects that you're not trying to control them, you're trying to swing them by turning your body. And they'll begin to swing. And you can keep it as a very limited movement, especially if it's bringing in some slight discomfort somewhere or major discomfort. But as you turn more and more, your spine will rotate more. There'll be that sudden stop of the arms flopping against you. You can sort of aim them up at your shoulders. You'll learn how to do that. Aim them at your sides and just overall, create a twisting movement that you find to be very pleasant, very comforting. And then we let that slow down. And when you're ready to, we start to create another angle, this forward and back. And if you throw down with enough force with the arms, you'll pull the weight back on the heels. And now we're doing an energetic action, often part of the warm up to various uh, Tai Chi and other types of uh, internal arts like that. But this stretches and moves and increases circulation and then we let that come to its stop and we bend our knees softly. We rock back into our heels until we lose our balance. That's key. We rock forward into our toes until we lose our balance. And I tell you this, if our balance is questionable, if we're worried about our balance, we have a, we have a struggle to actually let ourselves safely lose our balance because we're worried the worst thing's going to happen. But it's not right now because we're just, we're just, you know, we catch ourselves if we need to take a step forward or backward, we do. So we just let ourselves do that and let the body go, oh, okay, I can, I can catch me. One foot forward, so we teach ourselves that in the act of walking, when there's a mishap, bending the knees is gonna help us recover, just lower our center of gravity until we can recover our action. But this works when we really sort of invest ourselves. And so does the rest of yoga, when we invest ourselves into finding what are our edges? Where does it become complicated or somewhat difficult? Not painful, but just difficult. Where am I not shining the brightest in my abilities? Where am I needing to develop something? That's what we want to do when we come up to our edges when we do our yoga. Great. Now standing and letting all the weight you can come to the inner edge, lifting up the outer edge, even though that's difficult. And then taking the weight to the outer edge, lifting up the inner edge, and that's probably easier. But it's a stretch. And it's really good if we've got something going on in our feet, in our ankles, even in our knees. This is a great way to, uh, to stretch, but then we're gonna add to that the activation of our arch. We're gonna balance across the ball of the foot and push the heels outward and that activates the arch, it uplifts it. And we're gonna lift our toes into that and, and just for the hand's sake, we're gonna pull our fingers back too. And now we're gonna squeeze our toes, grip them down into the mat and then take the fingers into that line right at the top of the hand, we crunch down there. And so we're lifting and pulling back and squeezing down and, and gripping. And these are movements that probably don't come to us that often, maybe only when we're here. <laughs> Spread the fingers and the toes out wide and then squeeze them tight. And muscles control movements and muscles we don't use very often, don't know how to control movements. Move big toes towards each other. Part of the reason that yoga works so well is it's cross-training us to make us use the muscles we might not ordinarily use. Heels stay pushed out, big toes stays pushed down, lift the small toes up and down. Press the small toes down, lift the big toe up and down. And then biggest toe down and littlest toe down, we lift the three center toes up and down. And then we remain with the activated arch, heels pushing outward. 
Pull back the hips and lengthen the spine. So from the tailbone through the top of the neck, chin staying level, chest staying up, and shoulders staying down. We're going to breathe in and reach the arms out and up. And we're going to exhale, letting the arms come down the midline. But each time we change the pattern, we change the relationships of muscles. We're going to inhale up, exhale out and down. So that's a lot of what we're doing, muscle relationship counseling. Let's go to the side, inhale, exhale across. And we'll do that the other way. And then again. And we feel that in the neck, the shoulders, the upper and the lower back. Things are starting to combine together. Reach up the arms, lift up the center of the spine, lift up the side of your chest, stretch up that arm, nice deep inhale. Exhale, release, there goes Sandy. Lift up the center, lift up the side, stretch up the arm, inhale. Exhale, release. Again, the center and the side and the arm, inhaling. And exhale, bring up center, bring up side, bring up arm, inhale. And then exhale, take hands and interlock them. Turn out the palms, stretching those hands. We're going to bring the chest and the arms up. And as we lift, we're going to spiral and reach and inhale. Exhale, releasing ourselves out of that. We're going to uplift and we're going to spiral and reach and inhale. And then exhale, releasing ourselves out of that. Then we're going to lengthen. We're going to uplift. We're going to make our spine long and we let this arch occur. Deep inhale. And then exhale, let the arms swing loose. Bring up your chest, squeeze back those shoulder blades, reach back those arms, exhale. And then the shoulders go forward. We make it broad between the shoulder blades, deep inhale. And so it's reach and squeeze back and exhale. And forward shoulders inhale. And once again, reach and squeeze back and exhale. And then release. Now stand with the feet about shoulder or mat distance wide. And turn again. Make that twisting turn. It's probably looser now, easier to move and flow. We isolate to get to a specific muscle area. And I want deep layers of core. So we're going to uplift and turn the shoulders without moving the hips. Now, the movement may be very limited at first, but the body will learn once it knows we want to isolate things. Uplift and now move the pelvis. Don't move the chest or shoulders. Good. Now push your feet and your knees out away from each other and maintain that action in the outer hips. Pull into the core and with the chest up, lower the shoulders and push your hand firmly to one side, tilting to that side. And as you tilt the other side, we lift the ribs, we lift the arm, we don't collapse, we take a deep breath, exhaling and lifting up and all the way out. And then we press out again, belly in and chest up, shoulders go down, hand pushing, tilting, lift the ribs, lift the side, stretch the arm up, inhale, exhaling and lifting ourselves up and out. Now we're gonna make a wide stance. Bend at the knees, put the hands to the knees and go across the body softly, noticing where in the shoulder, ribs, low back, pelvis, inner thigh, you feel the stretch. Could be other places too. And we'll go across the other way, gently stretching and breathing. And then first side again, inhale, opening up those ribs. Exhale, center, reach across and inhale, ribs open. Exhale. Now, bring the elbows downward. Tuck a shoulder in toward that middle. See how that feels different than the other ways. We'll do the other side, tucking that shoulder in toward the middle. Good. Now, shift your weight to one side. You can come up higher. You can go down lower. Straighten the other legs so the inner thigh is stretching. Find the distance up or down that creates that perfect stretch you want to feel. Take a deep breath. And then on exhale, we're going to go the other way. We could be high, we could be lower, we could be hands toward the floor. We'll deeply inhale. 
and exhale to that first side again. Just adjusting and breathing comfortable. To that second side once more. Comfort's our goal. Now at the center, elbows on those knees, lift the hips up, find a little bit of stretch in the back of the legs, the hamstrings, and you can let the arms and the head hang or you can keep those elbows on the knees and just try and decompress that spine a bit. Breathe in nice and deep. And then put one hand down, bring the other shoulder up and back for a twist. Press out the feet, chest goes away from hips, arm reaches further up, take a deep breath. Exhale, we're gonna go the other way, the hand goes down. We press out the feet, the chest goes away from the hips, the arm stretches up, inhale. Exhaling, we come back to center. We're gonna bring our hands up. And once again, we're gonna reach across our body, just opening up those things that are slowly warming up. And the other way. And when we come to center, I want you to notice that those shoulders are really up toward the ears and keep them that way as you bend the elbows and bring them. Heel the palm into the crease line of the leg and lift the chest a little more, but shoulders stay near the ears. On one side, push, make that arm a little more straight or maybe it's straight enough to elbow that goes completely straight, but maybe not. Take a deep breath. Exhale, that elbow bends. Now the other side, we push, we let that arm go more straight. We take a deep inhale. Exhale, that elbow bends. And now both sides, we're gonna lengthen and stretch and decompress that spine. Let's take a deep inhale. Exhaling, bending elbows, bending knees. Here we go. Now that starts our warm-up process. We're going to continue with the sun salute. And you're going to modify things. You're going to make it just right for you so that the sensations you create are pleasant to the body. So let's stand at the front of the mat and activate the arch with the heels pressing out. Pull the hips back. Lift the spine. And inhaling now, we're going to lift the arms up. And as we exhale, we grab the elbows. We bend the knees. We lift the hips up. Elbows can stay on the knees or we can hang the head and shoulders down. We lift the hips to what is mild stretch and we can sway a little side to side to create a slight variation in that stretch of the back of the legs. Keep breathing deeply. And on this next exhale, we place our hands and step the right foot back into full lunge. Left knee stays over the ankle. We lift up the right hip. We balance the ball of the foot. The heel reaches back, the chest and shoulders pull forward and the left foot holds its arch. We can use a light pressure on our hands, or for more in, uh, action, we can take one or both arms forward. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, flatten the hands and step back into a plank position. The abs pull tight, reach the chest forward and the hips and heels back. Deep inhale, exhaling softly, lower down the knees. And let the hips move back toward the heels. Let the elbows come down and start to sway side to side. Now this. This sway we're doing could be very mild, or you could take it a lot further to one side, a lot further to the other side. Just you stay comfortable with it. You're going to feel it in the shoulders and other places too. Now we're going to come a little forward so the shoulders are over the elbows. We're going to start to sway the hips from side to side, and that could be a little bit. It could be more. I'm going to bring my knees together. I could continue to sway, or if I preferred, I could pivot my feet from side to side. Activating that deep core. Great. Now, top of the foot rests down, hands press evenly, and we come forward to upward dog, letting those shoulders travel forward to the wrist, lifting the collarbones as we sink down the hips. Press the hands and the top of the foot evenly, lift the collarbones, take a deep breath. And then exhaling, we move back to downward dog. So the tips and push the chest toward the thighs. Press those palms evenly, let the thumbs pull gently toward the feet, keep your head between the arms and lift up your heels, bending your knees, lift up your hips and push your chest toward your thighs. Broaden the shoulders a little by moving the shoulders toward those hips. And if you'd like, paddle those heels down and up. That will stretch the back of the leg just a little more. Take a deep breath. And on this exhale, we're stepping right foot forward to lunge, but you can bring that left knee down at any time to help you get that ankle forward. Lift up the left hip, balance the ball of the foot, Heel reaches back, chest and shoulders pull forward. Right foot holds its active arch. We can use a light pressure of the hands or one or both arms go forward. Take a deep breath and then exhale. We step forward, our feet hip distance. Press down into the heels and bend the knees and with that belly tight, inhale, lifting up and exhale. 
Round two, inhale up. Exhaling, grab the elbows, bend the knees, lift the hips. Now your elbows could come against the shins. And if you do that, pull the shoulders toward the hips to release your neck. Press the arms into the legs to move the ribs toward the knees and lengthen the spine. Press out the feet and the knees, breathe deeply into the upper back. So a lot going on in this forward bend. Deep inhale. Exhaling now, placing hands. It's going to be left foot back and lunge, but that's becoming side angle now. Left heel down, left shoulder up, right elbow up on the knee. Now it's important to have the hips in the center of the mat and then to move the right knee toward the right edge. You'll feel the outer right hip engage. Lengthen right side, shoulder away from the hip and press the feet into active arches. We're going to take first that left arm forward, stretching it away from the ankle, deep inhale. But then on exhale, you have the option. You can bring the left arm behind your back and reach the right arm forward for greater effort. Take a deep breath. Exhaling, bring the hands flat, step back in the plank. Activate, belly pulling in, chest forward, hips and heels back, inhale. Exhaling softly, lower the knees and hips back and elbows down. Now walk the right hand forward to pull the ribs a little past the knee and sway off to the right, gently stretching the ribs. And with every breath, focus on breathing to the right side. And that will pull more air into the lung structure on the right. It's going to expand that tissue, which is going to help it become pliable, more capable of a deep breath. And same with the stretching and the muscle action. This is going to emphasize our ability to breathe deeply. Now on the exhale, chest to center, the hands even, and then the left hand goes forward. We sway off left, we breathe. And so we have to develop the muscles of respiration. We have to develop the tissue of the lungs, its pliability. And these are things that we work on to create that deep, deep breath. Now exhaling, chest to center, and hands even. Let's come slowly forward to upward dog. Shoulders travel forward and wrist. Collarbones lift as we sink down the hips. Hand and top the foot pressure even. Collarbones lifting, inhale. And then exhaling back, downward dog, lift hips in, push the chest toward the thighs. Palms are evenly flat, head between the arms, balance the ball of the foot, lift the heels, bend your knees and lift the hips. Chest pushing toward the thighs. Now let's vigorously pull the shoulders toward the hips to engage our lat muscles. And while doing that, we push our hands and elbows toward each other, bringing contraction to the pectorals. And we add to that this widening of the shoulder blade so serratus anterior is working. We keep that happening as we lift the hips. We can paddle the heels down and up if we like. Let's take a deep breath. And on this exhale, now we step left foot forward. Remember, right knee can come down at any time to help adjust the leg. And then side angle, right heel down and right shoulder up and left elbow up on the knee. Hips go to the center of the mat. Left knee pulls to the left edge. Feel that hip engage. Lengthen that left side, and at first, just take that right arm and stretch it away from the ankle. Deep inhale. And then on exhale, you have the option of the arm coming behind the back and reaching the left arm forward for greater work. Inhale. And then exhale. We'll step forward our feet at distance. Press down those heels and bend the knees with belly tight. Inhale up. And exhale. And one more round. Inhaling up. Exhale, grab elbows, lift the hips, hang the head and shoulders. Now, get the upper body where you want. You can have the elbows resting, the head and arms hanging. Bend those knees comfortably. And then focus on your feet. Let's get a good arch and push the feet and knees away from each other, lifting up the toes. So we have this activated arch, but we're feeling the action in our hips because we're stretching the mat apart between our feet. Breathe deep, let the head and the arm hang as much as you can so the decompression effect will travel all the way to the pelvis and help us release tension there. Another deep breath. Exhale, relax the legs and place the hands. Step right foot back and bring the right knee down to a low lunge and let the top of the right foot rest. We're going to make a twist. So we'll place an even pressure on the right hand, the left hand to the knee. Now, if I wanted to be simple, I just turn toward that left front leg. If I want more action, I lift the hips, turn, and then sink down. We'll tighten the right seat muscle, we'll lengthen the right side, we'll breathe into the right side deeply. 
And then exhaling, placing hands and stepping back in plank. Abs are pulled in tight and we lengthen chest forward, hips and heels back. Inhale. Exhaling softly, lower down the knees. Hips back forward, the heels and the elbows are down. Now, press those palms nice and firm and flat and lift up the elbows. You will be able to squeeze your shoulder blades together. During this, keep focused breath into the belly as your shoulder blades are nice and tight. That's your rhomboid muscles being very active. And we're gonna partner them with their opposing muscle group. We're gonna bring the elbows down. We're gonna push the elbows down. And as we press elbows straight down, we're gonna lift our spine straight up. And that's serratus anterior. So the arms push down and the spine lifts up. Let's just go ahead and breathe into that upper back space as well. And then on this exhale, we come forward to upward dog. Shoulders travel forward of wrist, collarbones lift as we sink our hips, hand and top of the foot pressure even, lift collarbones, inhale. And then exhale back, downward dog, lift hips and push the chest toward the thighs. Those palms are evenly flat, head between the arms, balance the ball of the foot, lift the heels and bend the knees, lift the hips and chest pushing toward thighs. We're gonna pull shoulders toward the hips. We're gonna press hands and elbows toward each other. We're gonna make it wide between the shoulder blades. And to go further, we could shift weight to the left foot, maybe lift the right foot up, maybe stretch the right leg all the way up. Deep inhale, exhaling the right foot's gonna come down. We'll shift the weight to the right, maybe lift the left leg, maybe stretch the left leg all the way up. Inhale, exhaling, left foot coming down. And now we're gonna step right foot forward to lunge, left knee down, but you can bring the left knee down first since it's going down anyway. Let the top of the foot rest. We'll twist with an even pressure on the left hand, right hand to the knee. We could just twist straight over or lift the hips, twist, and then sink down. Tighten left seat muscle, lengthen left side, breathe into the left side deeply. And then exhale, we step forward, feet hip distance. Push into those heels, bend those knees, belly tight, and inhale, lift, and exhale. <laughs> That's great. Now we're thoroughly warmed up, and we want to use that to help us fully lengthen our spine. So take those feet into that wide position again, bend the knees a bit, and lift the chest up. You have a nice little crease line here between the leg and the pelvis. Put the heel of the palm there and tilt a little forward. Elbows are bent right now. We're gonna push one arm, keep the shoulder near the ear. Let's push the right arm, make it as straight as possible. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, we let the right elbow bend. And then we do this on the left side. We push, we let that arm go straight. We take a deep inhale. Exhale, the elbow bends. And now both sides, we press, we stretch that spine. We take a deep breath. And then we exhale and bend the elbows and bend the knees and we come out of that. So when we're thoroughly warmed up, the tissue structure changes, the joints have more of a lubrication, much like an oily substance, and this helps us create changes that we want. So long spine is one of the changes that we want. But another use of a warmed up body is to address some of the areas that we may have difficulty with. And I say that almost everyone feels that the back of their leg, the hamstring area should be longer, and certain poses uh, show us the difference between one side and the other. And you know, if we have a muscle that's shorter than it should be, it's living in relationship with other muscles. So this back of the leg lives in a relationship directly with the front of the leg. And if the front of the leg doesn't let the back of the leg action, stretch, or become active, then we're gonna have difficulties in the balance of power in the relationship. So let's take ourselves into something that's gonna give us an advantage of both releasing tension here and creating a, a challenge to our balance too. So I'm gonna stand at one edge of my mat, standing with an active arch, and I'm gonna step the right foot back. Now this is the one leg forward, forward bend, also known as par asana. Instead of letting my pelvis pivot away from the front of the mat, I keep my pelvis forward, and that should adjust me so that I've got my left foot close to the left edge and the right foot close to the right edge of the mat to allow that pivot forward. Now we're gonna start with some tight Thighs. So in the front, from the knee to the hip, we want firmness. This is going to suggest to the body that it should let go of the back of the leg. We also want to make sure that we bend only at the hip. So let's lengthen by lifting the chest away from the pelvis. You'll feel this nice increased length of spine. Thighs tight, long spine. We're going to tilt forward a fraction or two. And then re-tighten the thighs and re-lengthen the spine. 
very quickly before we want it, the back of that left front leg is going to tell us, hey, I'm starting to stretch. Maybe the right leg does too. Don't let the pelvis pull away from the front of that. Keep it pivoted forward. Keep the thighs as tight as you can, the spine nice and long. And don't dismay if you find you have tight hamstrings. That's so common. It's just practically a, a quality of all of us. So what we're going to do though, since this isn't going to go anywhere, the tightness isn't going to release immediately, we're going to bend that left front knee. We're going to take our hands to that leg and we're going to tilt ourselves down. I want us to be able to reach the force. I'll bend my knee enough to allow it. If this back leg feels a strong stretch anywhere, I can bend its knee too. So we're in position now, a very modified uh, Parsvottanasana. What I'm going to do now is hand stabilizing near the floor. I'm going to start to straighten that left leg just a bit. And that restraining of the leg is going to allow me to experience some stretch in the hamstring, usually a lot closer to the seat muscle area than it is closer to the knee, but, but your results may vary, right? So as we're in this position, we're making it really mild, something that we could do. I'm still keeping the right side of the pelvis pivoted toward the front edge of the mat, and I'm not making this an unbearable stretch in any way at all. But I have an option of taking a little further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push off on my right foot to take more weight onto the left leg. I'm going to move my hands wider and more forward to give me more balance. Now that might be all I do, or maybe I'll take even more weight onto the left foot, and maybe I will start to lift the right foot away from the floor. The bend of the left knee is always within my, my power. The right foot could stay touching down like a little kickstand there, or we could lift it up to about level to the floor. Breathe nice and deep. And on an exhale, put the right foot back down pretty much where it was. And we move ourselves backward, reweighting the right leg, bending both of our knees. We're going to place our hands on the knees and help ourselves lift up and then step ourselves forward and out of that. Okay, so the left leg is like, wow. <laughs> it got some action. It had to stabilize us. Our balance was challenged. Sounds like we need to do it on the other side. So. Let's start again. Feet hip distance out of minus. The pelvis right now is facing the front edge of the mat. Our feet are hip distance wide. We want to remain that wide. We'll step our left foot a comfortable distance back, but we got to be able to pivot the left side of the pelvis forward. We don't want it pulled backward. So we'll adjust our feet until pivoting the pelvis to the front edge of the mat is possible. Now we're going to tighten both of our thighs. We're going to lengthen our spine and maintaining that, we're just going to tilt forward. Now, it's possible that this is your looser side or your tighter side. As you're tilting forward, don't let the left side of the pelvis pull back. Keep it tilted forward. You'll limit yourself to what this side feels is a very comfortable stretch. Nice long spine, thighs tight. And of course, this isn't going to change very much if we hold it. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it in a different way. We're going to take our hands down the right leg, bending the right knee to a comfortable stretch point, taking the hands all the way down to give us stability. And then if you needed to bend that left back leg to release some tension, you certainly could. We'll slightly, slightly restraighten the right leg, just enough to feel the stretch, which as I said, is somewhere more close to the seat muscle edge than usually uh, to the back of the knee. And we're just hanging out. So we've gone from one type of stretch that required the front of the thigh to be active to this type of stretch just requires us to be very soft with the muscle in stretch. So we went from active stretch to this is what's called a passive stretch. So we're breathing very deeply and we can take it a little further. So I'm going to take my hands both wider and more forward. I'm going to transfer weight to the right foot, maybe only do a little bit. I can bend the right knee to adjust the stretch. I can transfer more of the weight or all of the weight. The foot could stay down like a little kickstand or I can bring the leg up to about level to the floor. Take some deep breaths. And then as we exhale this next time, we put the left foot down. It comes down about where it was and we push our weight backward and we're gonna bend the right and left knee. We're gonna bring our hands to the knees and we're gonna lift ourselves up and then out of position. And there we go, and the legs are like, whoa. All right, so activating and challenging, these are good things to do. But I want us to, we're going to release the hips a little bit more in a moment. We release the backs in a moment. But right now, I want us to release the neck and the shoulders. So I'm going to use a seated uh, position, and uh, I can use a bolster to sit on. You could use a block. You could sit directly on the floor. 
or in a chair. What I want you to do is to find a position that you're comfortable with. Now, the leg position can be many different things because we've got to take into account what do our ankles and our knees and our hips feel about this. We don't want to be in poor posture all hunched over. So what we need to do is to lift those hips up satisfyingly to allow this uplift of the spine. So the legs could be bent forward like this. And I typically use a cross leg position because I find it comfortable. If you do, you can uh, find this position as well or anything else that's comfortable for the body. So once we're seated down, we lift the spine so that the weight transfers off our tailbone and onto our sitting bones. And that is reflected through the rest of the spine as well. So we're lifting up through the top of the spine, the top of the head. Let's start with a roll of the shoulders. We'll take one shoulder and roll it and then the other shoulder. I do this one at a time because shoulders compete with each other. And I would like them to have their own little bit of a, you know, private time with me. I'm going to roll the other way. There's not that competition. I get more out of it. And I, I learn more about what they're, what they're doing right now. All right. So we've rolled the shoulder. I also want to know what's going on in my neck because there's a lot of companionship between shoulder muscles and neck muscles. So imagine you were lifting up through the very top of your head and you're just going to bend your chin slowly downward and feel that stretch in the back of your neck. Now very slowly turn your head from side to side. And you know, a lot of times we feel very different one side versus the other. Sometimes it's just a matter of the way we sleep or the pillows that we use. Other times it's something that we did with our shoulders or our arms or even our lower back that's creating this effect. And the stretch might be limited to the neck, but it could be between our shoulder blades or even all the way down our spine toward our tailbone. Now come to the center position and just feel as if your head is being lifted, that it's being pulled upward. And as you tilt your face up, even the face is being gently lifted toward the ceiling. Don't let the neck collapse and then turn the head slowly from side to side. It's not unusual to hear or feel noisy things going on in the neck. It's more likely that there's crunching, popping, and clicking when things are out of balance. Notice what you feel, and then we'll bring our chin to level. Now, once the chin is level, we're gonna use some eye muscles. We're gonna look as sharply to one side as we can, and then slowly turn our head. Imagine though that the head is being lifted up as we turn. We're looking as far to one side as we can, breathing deeply, and then we're lifting the head and looking with the eyes to lead us in the other direction. So eye muscles need to work too. Again, that first direction of look, back across, and again, the second direction of look. Good, and we come to center. Now uplift the head and tilt your ear toward one shoulder. This is probably the tightest position we've gone into yet. Uplifted and tilted the other way. We don't have a lot of cause to tilt our, our head toward the shoulder. And it's not like the head is gonna get all the way to the shoulder unless we have some really interesting flexibility. But it should come about a fist distance close, about 20 degrees close when it's uh, going to the side. So when it tilts over, it's the space of a fist between the ear and the shoulder is about normal. So you can sort of check yourself out and see if that's the case. Great, so now we've warmed up the neck structure. What I want us to do is to warm up the shoulders more and then we'll use shoulders and neck together. So I'm gonna take one of my hands and bring it across my shoulder and the other hand, I'm gonna make a circling movement. I'm gonna bring it far across, high up, far to its own side and down. Now how far I go is really based on what I feel. And there could be a lot of clicking and moving and signs that things are rubbing across each other. Again, more likely in imbalanced shoulders. Let's go the other way. But imbalance in a shoulder is likely. There's so many muscles, 18 in fact, that control shoulder movements that it's hard for them all to be at the perfect strength and the perfect length. Great. Let's do the other side. The hand comes across. And then I start to stretch across and up its own side and down. We may notice the lingering sensations of tightness in areas that have previously been injured or in our non-dominant side. Let's go the other way. Great. Okay. 
Now I want to stretch further certain aspects of the shoulder. So I'm going to place the hand across the shoulder. I'm going to lift this elbow up. Now I can lift it a certain height, but I can stretch it further. I'm going to use my other hand. I can pull up and move the shoulder blade too. I'm going to make a nice stretch all the way into the ribs. Take a deep breath. And then exhaling. Now I'm going to lower. I lower as much as I can, but if I stretch, I can pull down and stretch further. And we'll take a deep breath. And we let it go. Same side. I'm going to lift up and I'm going to stretch up nice and high. Inhale. Exhaling. I'm going to lower the shoulder. I'm going to stretch it down, pulling. Inhale. Okay, good. Now we're going to work the other side. So the hand comes across. The elbow lifts and we stretch it up. Inhale. Exhale. We lower the elbow actively and then we stretch it down. Inhale. Release. Again, the upward lift and the pull up. Inhale. Release. Again, the lowering and the pull down. Inhale. And release. Great. So we're starting to really loosen up some things, but that shoulder blade, that that action, I need to move it a little bit more. So I'm taking the hand across and my elbow stays low. Here I'm going to make a reach across low, but I'm going to pull and bring that stretch more into the shoulder blade. Take a deep breath. Exhale, let it go. We'll do the other side. Hand goes across. We reach and then we make a stretch. We pull, we take a deep breath. Exhale, release. Now I'm going to bring the hand up a little higher. The elbow is about the height of the shoulder. I'm going to reach across. I'm going to pull. Now with this pull, I'm going to lift my head. And I'm going to look over the shoulder that's stretching. We'll take a deep breath in. And then we exhale and we let it go. Okay. I'm going to do the other side. So the elbow's lifted to about the height of the shoulder. I reach across. I make that pull. I lift the head. I Look over the shoulder that's stretching. Deep breath. Exhale and we let it go. One more stretch. This is a little more awkward. I lift the elbow up a little higher than the shoulder. I reach with an upward lift. I pull with an upward lift. I'm still going to lift my head. I'm still going to look over the shoulder. We'll just take a deep breath. Exhale, release. Hand to the shoulder. I lift it up higher than the shoulder. I reach, I create that upward pull. I lift the head, I turn, deep breath. And then we exhale and we release all of that. But we've left one area that we need to open up and that is in the back of the chest. So I want us to do this. I want us to uplift the spine, drop the shoulders a little bit, keep the chin level, and then turn the palms facing down. I get my elbows as straight as I can. Now I start to pull the arms backward, but once I've got them back and I can use those shoulder blades together too, I'm gonna to lower each shoulder down a comfortable amount, keeping the elbows comfortably straight. Chin level, core nicely engaged. Let's take a deep breath and then we exhale and release. So it was pretty easy to find a stretch with the arms going backward. But now I'm gonna rotate the arms so the palms are turned up, elbows straight. I keep the chest lifted. I pull the arms back until the shoulder blades come together a bit. I lower each shoulder comfortably down. Elbows straight. We take a deep breath. And then we exhale and we let all that go. Let's roll those shoulders around again. Good. And then the other way. Good. Okay. Now let's come out of the seated position. Let's open up the spinal structure just a little more. So we're going to sit directly on the floor. We're going to sit with our feet nice and wide apart. Don't let yourself collapse. Use your arms to help lift you up and sit on the sitting bones. Now with this long spine, we're going to let our legs tilt toward the left until the outside of the left leg comes down and the inside of the right leg folds down and the legs fold in a zigzag pattern. Now my left arm's already to the left of my body. I'm gonna pull to the left and bring my right arm around until it's on top of that left leg. That's the knee that's closest to my left hand. 
I'm pulling to the left to stretch the side, but I'm going to make a twist. I'm going to pivot the right shoulder around and I'm going to bring this into a nice feeling stretch. We'll take a deep breath. And then exhaling, we release the right shoulder back to where it started. I can even come off that left hand if I want to. But I'm going to do it again. I'm going to lean to the left, pull to the left side, and pivot the right shoulder around into the twist. Take a deep breath. Exhale and release. And we'll do it again. Leaning to the left, pivoting the right shoulder around. We take a deep breath. But now this time as we exhale, we put both hands on the floor. We pull toward the fingers, twisting comfortably toward that left side. Breathing deeply, we're going to walk the hands a little further away until the left elbow can be brought down under the left shoulder with the side of the waist long on the left. Now walk the right hand forward. Some will be able to bring the right elbow down. Others feel that's too much. Pull toward the fingers and the right side of the pelvis. We're going to pull it gently back and take a deep breath in. Exhale, pivot the pelvis more forward. Again, pull toward the fingers and once more, right side of the pelvis pulls back. Inhale. Exhale forward. And again, pull toward the fingers, pivot the right side of the pelvis back. Deep inhale. And this time on the exhale, just walk that right hand further away. Stretch that right leg away from the body. Lengthen the left and the right side. Inhale. And then exhaling, bend the knee. Walk the hands back toward the body to bring yourself upright. Because we're going to do all of that on side two. So let's start with the feet nice and wide apart. But we're uplifted, sitting on the sitting bones. Tilt the legs to the right. Outside of the right leg down, inside of the left leg down, and the legs form a zigzag pattern. Right hand is to the right of us. We pull to the right, left hand on the knee, and we pivot that left shoulder toward the right. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release. It's not unusual to have a difference in ability one side to the other. Again, I pull to the right and I pivot the left shoulder around. Inhale. Exhale, release. And again, pull to the right, pivot that left shoulder, inhale. And then on this exhale, we walk both hands to the floor. We twist toward the right comfortably. And as we breathe through, we walk the hands away from us until that right elbow is far enough away. It'll come down under the shoulder. And we'll walk the left hand forward. Maybe we'll bring the elbow down, but maybe that doesn't feel best. Pull toward the fingers and pull the left side of the pelvis back into a comfortable twist. Inhale and exhale. The pelvis goes forward. Pulling toward the hands again. Left side of the pelvis pulls back. We inhale and exhale forward. Pull toward the fingers. Left side of the pelvis pulls back. Inhale and then exhale forward. Walk the left arm forward, stretch the left leg back, take another deep breath. And then exhaling, bend the left knee, walk the hands back toward the body to bring the body upright. Great. Now we've opened up our shoulders and our neck. We've opened up our spine. I want to open the hips even more. So let's come on to our back. Do several things to help the hips open up. All right, so once we're on our back, starting off with the knees in a bent position. And I want to adjust some things for the structure of the pelvis. So we're going to take our right knee in toward our chest, leaving the left foot down on the ground. Now I'm going to hold around the front of the leg and pull it in. That helps me flatten the back completely. And after I pulled in a couple of times, letting the back flatten, making sure it feels good, this next time as I pull the leg in, I use the leg muscles to try and move the leg away from me. But I'm pulling in at the same rate until it's a stalemate. I pull in just as much as I push away. And once I've got that happening, let's take a deep breath in. And then as we exhale, we relax our effort and we let the leg come down. That's going to help us adjust the alignment of the pelvis. Now the left leg is going to come in. And first, I just pull it in, letting the back naturally flatten. Do that a couple of times just to make sure this feels comfortable. 
And then I start pulling in, but I use the leg to try and move away. And I pull them to move away until I get it just the right amount. It's nice static action, just contraction. We'll take a deep breath in. And then as we exhale, we relax, we let that leg come down. Okay, so that's got the pelvis set, but let's, uh, let's check out the back of the leg, what we started with in our class. We're gonna bring the right leg in and put our hands in the back of the leg. Now, the more I keep this leg adjusted close to my chest, the more I'll stretch this portion of my hamstring that's nearer to the seat muscle. So I pull the leg in and I begin to straighten the knee, but the goal is not to make the leg completely straight. The goal is to create a stretch somewhere between the knee and the seat muscle. See what you feel and just take it to a comfortable position. Now we can increase the stretch into this lower leg region by reaching the heel. You can turn the foot side to side and create different areas of stretch. So I want the leg pulled in and the heel pressing, but you know, I could pulse it, I could bend it and then re-straighten it, keeping the leg always close to the chest so that I'm creating comfortable stretch. Okay, let's put that right leg down. Let's do the same thing on the left. So we're gonna bring the left leg in and put our hands in the back of the leg. Pulling in, keeping the leg close, we just notice the straightness of the leg and where the stretch is felt in the back leg. You're keeping that leg in close. We reach the heel, we can turn the foot side to side, so we, we adjust the stretch. And we can pulse it, we can bend the knee and straighten. We have no specific goal, just stretch is all we're after. So it, not to make that leg completely straight, that's not the effort. Okay, good. And then we'll let the leg come down. Now, here again, I'm gonna bring the right leg toward the chest, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach my hands along the leg to some holding point. Some people do hold near to the knee, other people can bring their hands all the way to the ankle area. And I want to act as if my arms are a cable system that I could sway to the right and I could sway to the left. I could straighten the leg more or bend the knee more. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a wipe effect. I'm gonna wipe across the ceiling with my foot. So if I'm looking straight upward, the foot just sort of obscures a certain section of the ceiling. And I can change where that foot is relative to the ceiling. Now my left foot is down and the left side of my pelvis isn't moving, but the right side of my pelvis rocks a little bit. I come off of it slightly, the right shoulder comes away, the left shoulder comes away a little bit, and that's perfectly fine. I can make a circle in the air with my right leg if I wanted to, and then do it the other way. Great, okay. So now we'll put the right foot down and we'll switch sides. So we're gonna bring the left leg towards us and we're gonna hold somewhere, it might be that we only hold near the knee or further up the shoulder toward the ankle area. And the arms act like cables so that we can sway it to the left and the right. I can straighten the knee more or less. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this left leg. To its comfort level, I'm just gonna keep wiping across the ceiling different places. So I go a little more to the left or the right as feels comfortable, knowing that the, uh, the right leg's gonna keep me nice and stable in position. I'm not gonna fall over. And I can make a circling movement with the leg one way or the other way. Good. And we'll come to center and put the leg down. Now on this right side, what I'd like to do is bring the leg in, but I'm only gonna use my right arm. Either I'm gonna put my hand on the outside of the leg so I can move the knee onto my arm where the elbow's resting down. I'll show you closer to the camera, this left side, so the hands on the outside of the leg like so. Or I'm going to reach my hand along the inside edge and hold either the ankle or the heel. There's different ways to do this. I'm gonna send my leg off to the right side. I'm gonna stretch my left arm out and lower my left leg down toward the floor so that the left side of me doesn't tilt off the floor. Now, I won't limit how much I go to the right. I'll limit how much I straighten the knee. These are all under my control. And remember, you can either hold to the inside of the leg or have the leg on your arm that's propped against the floor. It's whatever you feel is comfortable. The leg could be closer to the head or closer to the hips. We're just opening up the inside of our leg. And everyone's a little different about how 
much the leg straightens or where it moves to because all we're after is a comfortable stretch. Take another deep breath. And then let's bend the right knee and put the right foot down. Now the left leg, we're either going to put our hand on the outside of the leg and let it just be propped there, or we're going to reach the left arm to the inside of the leg, the ankle or the heel. It really is uh, whatever is comfortable. Letting the leg go to the left, but we're going to stretch the right arm out. We're going to straighten the right leg so that the right side of the body stays down. And the amount of straightness of the knee, the distance toward that left side, toward the head, toward the hip, these are all variables. Again, I've got the whole point on the inside of the leg, but I've also got a prop point with the elbow down on the outside of the leg, and it really is whatever is comfortable to you. I like them both. They're each a little different from each other. And all we're trying to do is to open up this inside of the thigh region. Take another deep breath. Exhaling, we'll bend the knee and we'll come back to center. Now we're going to cross the legs. So I'm going to bring my legs, knees bent, and I'm going to cross the right leg, drape it over the left leg. Now at the moment, my legs are down. I stretch my arms out and start to rock from side to side. I'm just determining how that feels. Before I put the weight of the legs on my back, I want to notice as I tilt from side to side with that left foot staying down, does this feel like the right thing to do for my low back and pelvis. As I tilt to the side, I'm gonna feel some sensations in these outer hip lines. Now you can keep the legs in this position, left foot on the floor, or you can bring the legs toward the body and continue to rock side to side. You can always experiment and lower the legs down again if the weight of the legs seems too much. But obviously the more we go to the left, the more we go to the right, the more stretch we'll feel. Let's not have the right leg over the top of the left leg. I'm not changing that position yet. So it's nice and back and forth. The knees could be closer to the chest. They could be further away from the chest. This changes the angles on the back and on the hips. Good. Coming to center, left foot coming down. I'm uncrossing. So start with the right foot down. I just drape the left leg over the right leg. And with the right foot remaining down, I rock side to side. I'm not just going to assume that my back likes this just because the other side did. So we just find out what's, what's the sensation level, what do we like doing, and if we wanted to, we come to the center, pulling the legs toward the body. So remember, one version of an action is not better than another, it's just different. And if we like something better in a certain way, well, we just do it that way. So the legs could be closer or further away from us, angle of stretch in the outer hip. This is what we're after. We're breathing deep, opening up our back. Great. Coming to center, we're going to put the right foot down. Now, we're going to straighten the left leg out completely. We're going to bring the right leg in with our hands in the back of the leg. We're going to straighten the right leg a little bit. But we're doing something with the left leg, too. We're pushing down the back of the left knee. We're reaching the left ankle away. As we bring the right back of the leg into a stretch, the left front of the hip will be in a stretch as well. Make it comfortable, a reasonable action. Deep breathing. Okay, now bend the right knee more and take your arms out to the side, pushing down on the shoulders and on the left leg. Bring the right leg across your body. Let the right side of the pelvis lift up if it's comfortable. Shoulders down, left leg pressing. The right leg comes across comfortably and we decide how much we want to straighten the leg or bend the knee how close we want it toward the head and chest or toward the hip. So we just make all these comfortable adaptations. If you like, you can turn your head toward the right and create a stretch in the neck at the same time. Shoulders down, left leg still actively pressing. Take a deep breath. Exhale, return the head to center, bend the right leg, bring it back to center. And now we're gonna pull the left leg in and stretch the right leg out. Pressing down on the right leg, we will open up the back of the left leg and open up the front of the right leg. So think of that right knee trying to get to the floor. It's not going to get there. And just make it a comfortable stretch, breathing deeply. You may find tightness more on one side than the other. Deep breath. And now we let the left knee bend. And we take the arms out to the side and we press down the shoulders, we press down the right leg. We're going to bring the left leg across the body, letting the left side of the pelvis lift up. 
We can bend the knee more or less. We can bring it closer to the head, closer to the hip. So we set things up that this side likes the action. Right leg is pressing down, left leg is adjusted in a comfortable way. Breathing deeply. If you want, turn your head toward the left. Shoulders pressing, right leg pressing, comfortable stretch. Let's take another deep breath. Returning the head to center, bending the left leg, bringing it back to center. And this is great. Let's adjust until both legs are out straight. And take the arms, instead of out to the side, straight arms brought up, they gotta be able to come to the floor. Maybe it's still out to the side much, or maybe it's coming in the direction of the head. That's going to create some stretch in the shoulder. Some of you will be just right next to the head. Others will find that that eliminates the ability to have the elbows straight. So I want the elbow straight and the arms completely against the ground. Once you've found that, your personal space there, I want you to stretch the right wrist and the right ankle away from each other. So the right side of our body is longer than the left. Take in a deep breath. Exhale, release it. And now reach the left ankle and the left wrist away from each other and take in a deep breath. And release. Right side again. Reach. Inhale. Exhale. Left side again. Reach. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do both at the same time. Arms and legs reach away from each other. We're going to be inches taller after this. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Relax. Now bend the elbows and let the arms slide until they're about angled away from the chest 45 degrees. Try and move the shoulders further from the head toward the hips but also make it wide between your shoulder blades. Adjust the head so it's right in the center and turn the hips in and out until the legs know they can relax more. You can tense and release the seat muscles to help the pelvis relax. You can flatten and arch the back to get yourself into the just right length of spine arch of back position. For a moment, notice the way you feel and then make a soft contraction in the hands and in the feet. Bring that contraction into the lower arms and lower legs, into the upper arms and upper legs, into the seat muscles and belly, into the chest and neck and face. Hold contraction everywhere you can. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, soften all contractions. Try and go completely limp. Open up the hands, relax feet away from each other. You might have to tense and release a couple of areas a few times until they know they should let go too. But try and get to the point where it's as if you've just melted in place. Notice what you feel and where you're feeling it. If something seems tense, tighten it a little bit, let it go. Move it a little bit, let it soften. How calm and relaxed can you possibly be right now? Breathe in deeply. Expand your lower abdomen, lower sides of the ribs, up into the upper rib cage and back. Fill up completely and then exhale. And every exhale is a chance to go even more soft and more relaxed. Deep, deep inhales and slow exhales again and again and again and again. And this might be the way you spend the next few minutes or half hour or the rest of the day. Whenever you want, you can begin the process of slow and gentle movement that will bring you into stretch, bring you onto your side, and eventually let you come back into a seated position. Take your time, do whatever you feel is right because you've done a great job already. Excellent work today.